Hello! In this video, we're going to be talking about single slit diffraction. Uh, this is an HL topic. Um, we'll at least be looking at the HL piece of this topic, uh, which is covered in your data booklet under topic 9. So we'll look at the math of single slit diffraction and ask ourselves, why the heck, if light is coming through one opening, why am I getting interference? All right, recall that this is what the uh, single slit pattern looks like. I have a very bright, wide central maximum. Then dark spots, bright spots, dark spots, bright spots. I get this kind of intensity versus position graph. And so the main question we want to be asking ourselves is why slash how am I getting these points of destructive interference? What is interfering if light is just coming through one opening? Okay, enter the Huygens principle. And this is a pretty wild concept. Um, do your best to wrap your head around it. It's a mathematical model, a way to describe and kind of propose how waves propagate and move uh, through space and does allow for this uh, sort of interference effect that we see within the diffraction of light. Okay, so the idea is that the every wave front, um, Huygens was a Dutch physicist with some crazy ideas like every wave front can be thought of as an infinite number of little tiny baby waves called wavelets. All right, so the idea is essentially that um, on the top of each wave front, if you want to picture the wave fronts as we draw these diagrams, each one of these wave fronts imagine as a line of like infinity little tiny baby rubber duckies bouncing up and down, creating their own little tiny ripples. And if we connect the uh, individual ripples of each little wavelet, we get the next wave front. So you can try and sketch it out, see if you can convince yourself that a line of these little dots all creating circular wave fronts would connect to make uh, their, their wave fronts would all overlap and create a straight line in front of them. And then again and again and again, if I kind of draw and combine these, I can see that next straight wave front. Uh, this principle is pretty crazy, but it does describe two things. Number one, it describes why this kind of diffraction happens like this, because um, with all of this space, they, there's um, we get the next line as a straight line, but when they come through the opening, there's no more wavelets over here. So the wave fronts created by this little wave wavelet uh, do kind of bend. We get the bendiness from the sides here, and that's why we kind of get you know, the diffracted wave front is sort of flat in there in the middle, but it is rounded off on the edges, right? That kind of explains this, and it also explains this interference. The idea is that the waves, individual little waves from these wavelets can interfere with one another. So that's what we'll look at for the math of single slit. Okay, so here's the concept, here's the setup, here's how this equation is derived. Again, you get this equation in your data booklet, but this is another one where it is useful to know the derivation, where it comes from, understand the geometry happening, uh, especially. Okay, so A, A prime, B, B prime, all represent wavelets. The main concept is this, this is another kind of tricky one, but what we wanna focus on is the minimum the first minimum, because that's where destructive interference hap is happening. So that's probably one of the um, most straightforward places to look to come up with some math. And the idea is here, all of the wavelets must be canceling each other out. There's total destructive interference here because I do get a dark spot. If there's like an infinite number of wavelets, whoa, we got to think about how we could get all of them canceling out. Uh, here's the kind of trick. Uh, the setup here is that every wavelet interferes with another wavelet exactly halfway down the slit. So here's wavelet A right at the very, very, very top of the slit, and here's wavelet B right smack in the middle. These two are interfering with one another destructively. If that's the case, then every wavelet will have a buddy halfway down the slit that it interferes with. So for example, A prime, maybe a quarter of the way down, is gonna interfere with B prime, maybe three quarters of the way down, and they'll cancel out, all right? And there is like an A double prime right here and a B double prime right here, and they cancel out. And so if every wavelet has an accompanying wavelet halfway down the slit, then even if there's quote unquote infinity of them, they will all cancel out with their partner, and at P, I would get total destructive interference. 
that's the concept again meditate on that a little bit that's a that's a tricky one uh, but that's the concept so we're going to be looking at half of the slit for that reason some variables to introduce the width of the slit and sin single slit interference we call little b little b is going to be the size of the opening traditionally is what we're going to use all right, so of course, when we create our little right triangle here to look at a path difference, we're dealing with a B over two hypotenuse. And this is the path difference. Again, just like when we did the double slit, we're making some, or the two source interference, uh, we're making some assumptions, which again, the diagram is not nearly to scale, but we are assuming that this line is more or less parallel with this line. And for the distances and sizes and such that we'll be working with, that really is a very good assumption. All right, but that being the case, this is the path difference. This is how much further the wave from B has to go compared to the wave from A. And of course, for interference, it's all about the path difference. So we got to set this up with path difference. All right, and at the first minimum, the idea is going to be that the path difference uh, is going to be, we can do some trigonometry here. So we're doing some SOHCAHTOA. Um, and might not be in here. All right, this angle is the same as this angle, just like before, similar right triangles. So I take the sine of that angle, uh, solve for my path difference, the opposite leg, and I get B over two, the hypotenuse times the sine of this angle, which is the angle we say to the first minimum, like this, All right? And if that's my first minimum, remember how destructive interference works i get destructive interference when i'm off by a half number of wavelengths so if the path difference is half a wavelength they're going to cancel out crests and troughs line up total destructive interference it could be one and a half wavelengths or two and a half wavelengths or 900 and a half wavelengths but since this is my first minimum over here the path difference is zero path difference increases and increases and increases until half a wavelength that's the first time i'll see the stark spot so there's the setup. That path difference is half a wavelength. Now we math. Math, math, math. Um, when we solve for the, for the angle is typically uh, what we're going to look at here. We're going to get the sine of the angle is equal to the wavelength divided by the size of the slit. And here is another small angle approximation. Uh, believe it or not, we're going to do this. The sine of theta is yeah, it's about the same thing as theta. They're basically the same thing. Uh, all right, again, this works for small angles only, so usually less than like five degrees, um, 10 degrees. It starts getting a little funky, but still pretty good. Uh, one thing to note here is you definitely need to be in radians, be in radians, right? So, like, try it out, try it out. Take the sine of, I don't know, 0.01 radians or the sine of 0.05 radians. Um, you'll see that you get some very, very, very close answers when we're dealing with these small angles. All right, remember, we can also say that's more or less the same as the tangent of the angle. All of these things at small angles are very close to each other, and certainly we're not gonna be doing, dealing with enough precision where it's gonna matter where that rounding happens. All right, so all that being said, this single slit equation is this, angle equals wavelength over B. This just shows up in the data booklet under single slit uh, diffraction. So you need to bring some knowledge like with the whole data booklet, which is mainly uh, what these variables are. So theta is a very specific angle. It's the angle to the first diffraction minimum, and it's got to be in radians since we're using the small angle approximation. That's the angle to the minimum of a single slit diffraction in radians. It's a very specific equation. Uh, lambda is, as always, the wavelength of the incident light, the light coming into the slit, and B is the width of the slit, the size of the opening. All right. The main thing this equation tells me, one concept that you want to be able to picture and think about here, is that the angle to that dark spot depends on the wavelength. So different wavelengths will be diffracted at different angles. Red light will be spread out a different amount than blue light, and so on. All right, this is one way we can see dispersion of light, which is, remember, white light is all of the colors of light happening together, superimposed on each other. And your brain, when it sees that, goes, whoa, white light. 
Um, and you see red and green and blue and orange and yellow and yada yada all together. If I send white light through an opening then, the red parts are going to spread by a certain angle. The blue parts will spread by a different angle. A uh, good exercise is you want to be able to do this. Think about which one will get spread more versus less and why. All right, but you can see here you get this this fringing and this almost rainbow effect. You can see the red light and the blue light being split and separated by different amounts, and you get this rainbow fringing, especially out at further maxima. All right, so it breaks light up into its component wavelengths. It splits the red differently than the blue, and everything in between. And so we can take that white light and we call that dispersion. Whenever you're breaking light up into its component pieces. This is one way to do it. There are other ways, like with um, prisms and some other ideas. But that the single slit will disperse light for that reason. So that concept, this relationship, you want to be able to talk about. Okay. Um, last kind of thing that the IBA likes to ask you to do. It's pretty common. Um, you know, the angle is not necessarily easy to measure, you can imagine, because you have this pattern on a wall. What's very easy to measure, though, is how why the bright spot is you can get a ruler and just measure it so the width of the central bright fringe we call these fringes a lot these bright and dark spots um, the width here we can use some trig and solve all right there's the angle to the minimum remember it's the angle to the minimum there's x so let's see how do we want to set this up let's do some more small angle approximation how do you like that all right if I take the tangent of this angle, it will be equal to half of the width divided by the distance to the screen. That's Sokotoa, opposite over uh, adjacent. All right. And so I can solve for the width of the, sorry, the width of this uh, bright spot just by substituting in, solving for x here. And so the width of that bright spot should be twice the distance to the screen times the angle in radians. Um, because that's about the same as the tangent of the angle. All right, that can give you the width. Um, you definitely want to be able to know how to do this. You can sketch the triangle quickly um, to, to you know, figure out that, that width. So it's all right triangles that you want to be able to think about. Right? All right, with that being said, here is a problem. You give it a shot. Try it out. See if you can use that... Um, See if you can use that equation and just walk through those. This is a pretty straightforward application of those equations, but this is exactly the type of thing that the IB might ask you to do. So go ahead, pause the video, give it a shot. The answer is there so you can see if you're on the right track, but I'll show you a kind of worked out quick solution in three seconds. Hey, you're back. Okay, here it is. Uh, we're going to use, of course, the single slit equation. Um, now we're going to use the wavelength of light. Of course, just be careful with your units. I have micrometers, which is a pretty common type of thing to see for the wavelength of uh, some kind of light. And so there we go. We're going to convert that to 10 to the minus 6 is what micro means. Um, we're going to divide by the width of the slit. And there's my angle in radian. So that's the angle, remember, to the first minimum. That's this angle here, right there. Just for reference, that's about 1.88 degrees. If you need to be convinced that we totally are okay using small angle approximation. Um, if you still don't believe me, go for it. Try it. Put the sine of 0.0329 radians into your calculator in radian mode. And put the tangent of 0.0329 radians into your calculator in radian mode. I bet you get about the same decimal for all those answers. All right. So for that reason, we're going to use our small angle approximation again over here. Multiply 2 by the distance to the screen, 2 by that uh, angle. Simple, simple. And I get it's about 25 centimeters wide. All right, so there you go. That's the equation. That's how you use it. Um, there is plenty of, of fun to be had with single slit diffraction, but those are the basics so that you can uh, go cut loose. All right, have fun.